Hey everybody, Brickstar56 back again. Um, so I know in our last uh, video uh, I said it was probably going to be a while. Um, it, well, <laughs> I drove across the country in 62 hours and 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> From California to, well, North Carolina. I'm not in Virginia yet, but this is where I'm stopping for now, at least until July. Um, I'm at my parents' house, uh, so if it sounds a little bit different, that's why I kind of got a different setup here. I'm still using the same microphone, mouse, uh, uh, keyboard, all that. Um, but yeah, I've just um, I have the microphone definitely positioned differently since I'm on like a full table here. It's actually kind of comfortable too. So I'm not using my keyboard in like a, a lap tray like I was back in California. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, I wanted to do uh, some more videos because a lot of cool mods uh, came out like while we were gone. Um, there's a fucking grenade launcher mod for the uh, uh, marksman carbine. I want to try that out. I don't have it installed at the moment, but uh, at some point I will check that out. Um, actually, what we should do is we should go pick up the weapons. So there's two weapon mods I saw on the Nexus. I think one of them's been out for a while. Um, it's a 9mm pistol, like the vanilla one. Customization, like advanced customization. And it's compatible with the Akimbo 9mm. Um, so I actually I don't know if I need just a vanilla. I probably need a vanilla, like an unmodified 9mm, but the uh, service rifle, or not the service rifle, the marksman carbine one for the grenade launcher, that one is compatible with the All-American, so I want to pick that up. Um, yeah, I want to get one of those, and is it called a Kimbo 9mm, or is it 9mm Kimbo? Or is it it's probably dual, right? Dual, dual nine millimeter pistol. Okay, I just want to have these in my inventory for when I do try out those mods. Um, I've also been seeing that there's there were some updates to the uh, Tales from New Reno mod, uh, which I do want to try that out because you know some of these quest mods I've never played before, like all these overseer ones that we've been doing with like Eliza and the initiation. I've never played them before, so it is really fun, just for me alone as it is, as much for you guys watching, uh, for me to get to try these out, because like when we do, um, I don't know, like dialogue choices and stuff, I have no idea, you know, like the consequences of what I'm going to say is going to have in the game. Um, New Vegas Bounties, it's kind of like, I've played it probably four times now, so I mean, it's still fun, definitely, I love New Vegas Bounties, but... I already kind of know, like, <laughs> everything that can happen. Um, well, most of the time. Sometimes I, I don't entirely know. I don't remember. But, um, yeah. Let's, let's get to it. Oh, yeah, so I am going to post some pictures on YouTube as soon as I figure out how to actually do that. Um, but uh, let me show you guys where I've actually been. On the trip because I did actually stop in Good Springs. I went to the Prospector Saloon and the uh, general store. Um, I saw a sign for Nipton, but I didn't go to Nipton. I thought I was going to because I, I saw on the map that it was like on the way. I thought I was gonna have to cross through Nipton. Nipton's actually in California. Uh, it would technically be like over here. And then you're supposed to go through Nipton, then through Prim, which is in uh, Nevada, up from Prim to um, Jean, which is its own town, um, and then uh, up to Good Springs, which is kind of like just a little like off the main road thing. Um, Jean was actually pretty cool. Uh, there's a place called Terribles there. It's like a I don't even know how to describe it. It's, 
Imagine a store at a gas station, but it's like the size of a Walmart. <laughs> There's a, a Red Bull lounge there. Yeah, like a, a lounge with like fridges full of Red Bull, Red Bull couches and stuff. They had a car from the James Bond movies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fucking incredible. Uh, I briefly passed through Prim. I saw their casino, uh, Whiskey Pete's. It's like the big one there. Uh, the long 15, I, w I traveled on the I-15 um, up until I got to the I-40. Um, yeah, it's definitely a, there's like a long road just like this um, leading into Nevada. <laughs> um, where else? So then from Good Springs, so once I left the saloon there, I had to go back down to Gene, travel... I, I don't think I was actually going on this real road here. This is the 15 still. Well, maybe I was. I got to Boulder City. Um, passed through there at night. And then I saw all the signs for Hoover Dam. Now, you can't actually drive over Hoover Dam anymore, Dave. It's no longer allowed. Um, there's a bridge that runs, like, in front of it? Like, Hoover Dam's here. There's, like, a bridge here. It crosses into Arizona over the Grand Canyon. So I saw the signs for Hoover Dam. And then I saw a sign saying there's a bridge. So I knew I was going to be on that bridge. I guess I crossed it, but I did not see Hoover Dam at all. Like, it was night. I didn't see anything. And then all of a sudden my GPS is like, welcome to Arizona. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't even see the fucking canyon. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so what, what were we doing last episode? I kind of just jumped right into this. I probably should have wa watched the last episode again just to kind of recap where I'm at. Oh yeah, so we're meeting, we met those NCR guys um, uh, here. They wanted me to go like assassinate some people, or she did, and that guy wanted me to scalp some people. Um, Okay. Yeah, so these are like all the assassination things. This is the research bunker. Well, let's go do that, because that sounds pretty interesting. So we can go to Xander Bay with all the death claws, or we can go down here. We're going to have to, like, jump down the Grand Canyon. <laughs> yeah. Um... Just a heads up, it is like 81 degrees at my parents' house up on the second floor. Um, so if the fans on my like computer coyotes. kick in, I'm glad things just got in. That's why. All I'm doing is pissing him off. I'm also, um, well, I was gonna say I was having better at people. Well, alright, right now I have like 60, it just dipped down to 30. Oh, I hear the fans kicking on. <laughs> I was gonna say, since I'm not recording on a monitor, Ryan's back up to 60. I have a better FPS. Like, when I'm not recording at all, it was at like 90 to a 120 FPS. I'm like, that's insane. Fallout New Vegas at 120 FPS. Oh shit, I'm out of ammo. Uh, Spears. You got Legion? You like that? Help! Oh, yeah, we got Legion. Die, ah! again. I hear him. I see him. Oh, there they are. Oh, there go the fans. I hope it's not too loud. I can move the microphone uh, in the next video. That just bounced off the ground. This weapon's on its last. Okay. Retribution! 
So yeah, there was some other quest mods, uh, like Tales from New Arena, which I saw was getting some updates, and I think, I think Tales of Nerino, there's like three episodes of it, like it's kind of like a chapter based uh, quest mod, um, and it looks like the last few updates have been adding voice acting, which usually that's kind of like my, um, if I'm, if I'm going to play like a, a quest mod, that's kind of one of my like requirements, just because it, it, it really adds to the immersion of it. Um, I know A World of Pain doesn't have voice acting, but with everything that that mod adds, I'm willing to overlook it. But most of the other quest mods I have, I mean all of them that I have, Caravan of two now. have voice acting. Um, let's see, how are we going to get down here? Yeah, so there was... Tales from New Reno, and then a new one that came out a couple weeks ago, back while I was even in California. Um, it's called Havasu Blues. Uh, it looks pretty good. I, I was watching uh, Al Chesbridge play in it. Um, he, I think he's still uh, playing it at the moment, so I won't play it anytime soon, but uh, somewhere down the line I would like to give it a try, because it's got pretty good voice acting, it looks like. Tribal scout. Oh. Right. Huh. fish in the vanilla game. Like, I think you can normally see them in the water. Right? Am I just talking out my ass? I don't know if that's a custom asset or not. I feel like I've seen fish before, though. It's weird that you can see fish, but you never see anyone selling fish. Like, as food or something. Can you imagine if Fallout had fishing in it? Like Far Cry 5. <laughs> Vault 40. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I. Wait. Wait a minute. Vault 41, and then. Damn it, how does Sam keep getting in my boots? Hold on. I think we have an issue here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, Vault 41 is from uh, A World of Pain. <laughs> I think this is the second one that we've had this issue with. Hmm. Should we check out Vault 41? I mean, we may as well. You know what, let's check it out afterwards. We'll, we'll do this first. I know a world of pain conflicted with the other town that was added by this mod. So I'm gonna have fun when you need something with Great, me. so if this cocksucker wants to just stand still while I go through oh. every single round I have, oh. we might have a chance. Ah. Murderer! Ah. Oh, Jesus, what was that? What did you hit me with? Oh. oh, what the hell is that? No one will even remember your name. Zap uh. Get down.
break these. Karma for this. This is like some sort of ethical dilemma. I know I was when I was looking up um, ways to lose karma because we were trying to get that perk. Um, sawed off laser shock. Ooh. Yeah, when I was looking up ways to lose karma um, on the Fallout wiki, it actually said um, I think every doctor, like named doctor in the um, the game, I think it's like, um, negative five, oh, it appears that this communal area is the only part of the research facility that hasn't collapsed in on itself, you should return to Sawyer and inform him, okay, um, yeah, every named doctor, uh, gives you like negative 500 karma if you kill them, Shotgun. Hmm. Upgraded design. Natalie Vaughn's terminal. Oh God. <laughs> oh, we really picked a, a great starting point. Okay, entry one. So here we are, four scientists, three protectrons, and a bunker with the resources to keep us all alive for the next century. All so far, we can help serve the war effort. Oh, also we, also we can help serve the war effort. What effort, I wonder? Surely there are no soldiers left to fight. Regardless, I find it calming. It's far easier to be alone with my work, with the rest of the human race vaporized in an instant. I am fond of none of my colleagues, but I can tolerate three voices chattering at once. Really? Because I can't. <laughs> Dr. Emerson has begun work on some sort of laser shotgun project. It's bulky and inefficient. I expect I'll have to devise my own solution to the problem in the coming days, as if I didn't have enough to do. Dr. Elsie informed me that she is working on a modified strain of the new plague, an uninspired name, that one, uh, uninspired name, that one. I imagine the alternatives relevant disease and current events virus were considered regardless current events virus i remember that one she was working on modifying the plague to target specific racial groups specifically those of asian heritage wow oh you know if y'all have ever watched there's a tv show called um fringe it's all about this like pseudoscience stuff it was on uh fx oh man here i go talking about tv shows again um all right, so, all right, I'm just gonna finish. But uh, one of the episodes, it was about um, there was a like a Nazi scientist, right? That he had been alive, you know, since like he he was old, but stayed alive after the war and everything. Um, and uh, he was developing like some sort of nerve agent that it, it could basically do the same thing that they're talking about here, like it would target specific groups uh like based on the race and so what was the what was the scientist there was the other scientist walter he was like the good guy um and so he, he took the guy's research and he refined it to the point where like it was so specific that when he released it it only killed that one that one scientist the nazi scientist so, yeah, it was it was a crazy episode, but it was, it's a good show. Definitely, definitely worth watching, or pirating, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> an interesting notion, but one that would likely have been more useful if it were devised before the nukes were launched. I wonder how she plans to test her virus. That's a good point. <laughs> Entry. Oh yeah. 
3. Emerson was angry with me for creating a superior version of his prototype. <laughs> I would find his distress more amusing if I didn't know I would be sealed in this bunker with him for most likely the rest of our lives. Dr. Garth informed me that he did not believe anyone could would come for us. I told him I don't care. There is food, water, air, and shelter down here. It is a mostly silent place for me to do my work without interruption. He continues to fret over his wife and children. There is almost no chance that they are alive. He could choose to worry about things that actually matter, such as the prototype disabler rifle. Hmm. Starting to suspect that I will have to salvage the disabler project as well. I will not be having to do any work on the disabler project due to outside circumstances. Specifically, Emerson is locked in the infectious diseases laboratory. Apparently, he went to speak with Dr. Elias. I just called her El Elsie. We're, we're going with that. Uh, she was busy elsewhere, and so Emerson began to look around her research. At some point, he broke the seal on the container of Elsie's new plague strain. This, it, the facility, I'm happy to report, automatically detected the breach and sealed off the laboratory for quarantine. Emerson will remain inside until such a time that we are 100% positive he is not infectious. Work is so much easier without that cretin trying to prove himself. Apparently, Dr. Elsie's project failed to meet her goal. According to her, the disease was only capable of being contracted by people of Asian descent, and yet Emerson is dying. We can see through the observation window he is sweating profusely, his breathing is labored, and he lacks energy. Swelling around the face and neck, discolored cysts, auditory and visual hallucinations, Dr. Garth is, as expected, playing pretend and stating that Emerson will make a recovery. He will not. I congratulate Dr. Elsie on her strain, even if it failed the primary goal. It's impressively lethal and efficient. Um, Emerson's in is dead and per protocols the lab is being purged and sterilized of all Dr. Elsie's sample uh, sterilized all of Dr. Elsie's samples were destroyed in the purge but her research is untouched which is a net victory fortunately the entire lab now smells like burned meat sterilizers were probably not intended to be used while humans were still in the room this would bother me more if I had any reason to linger in the laboratory I did not Dr. Garth vomited once we opened the door this is disgusting so naturally he had to clean it up uh, while he was at it, we made him dispose of the charred corpse as well. I imagine we could have made the Protectrons do that if the idea had occurred to us. Dr. Garth abandoned the facility in the night. At least he had the common courtesy to use the airlock so as not to introduce outside particles into our environment. I can't imagine how he survived long out there. For now, we press ever onward. Dr. LZ overindulged herself with alcohol after dinner. This would be worrisome if not for the facility's auto-sealing laboratories. As it is, I have no need to worry about her drunkenly stumbling into her sample cooler and infecting the place. Still, the Protectrons make for better company than this drunken reprobate. Uh, seven? Nope. Uh, eight. Medical facility suffered structural damage last night. Facility should hold up for the next century, after which point I expect it to collapse entirely in on itself. I will be long dead by then. Speaking of death, Dr. Elsie is now spending all of her time drinking and engaging the Protectrons in circular conversations. There is a lack of work being done. We were given this facility for the sole purpose of creating tools to advance the war effort. There may not be a war effort anymore, but there is so much work we could do. I hope Dr. Elsie returns to her senses soon. I do not know anything about engineering pathogens, and I would hate to have the lab wasted. Dr. Elsie slit her wrist last night. It looks like the laboratory will be wasted after all. A shame. I have officially completed every possible project I could. While being sealed in this lab, there is no chance that I will be heading outside, so I shall occupy myself with entertainment archives. Once I have finished that, I expect I'll overdose on sleeping pills. It is a pleasure to work in an environment such as this. Dr. Natalie Vaughn. Well, you seem like a person, perfectly reasonable person. Reminds me of, uh, of Bones. <laughs> Another TV show, I know. <laughs> uh, made several improvements on Emerson's design. Quite frankly, his concept was laughable. Everyone 
uh, know that upping the power consumption results in a higher output. Likewise, we are all aware that beams can be split multiple times. Combining these concepts is not a new idea. I, however, have made it wholly original. I have removed a superfluous porting frame. It added unnecessary weight to the unit and made the weapon less useful in confined quarters. I've also removed the handguard. We'll simply have to have faith that any users will simply, in their fumbling way, not drop their gun. I have coated the outside of the weapon with a silicon carbide finish. This will protect the unit from scratching and inclement weather conditions. It also cuts down on reflectivity in the event of a night operation. I cut down the power usage. This did not render the be beams slightly less punishing, but is still. Oh, this does render the beams slightly less punishing, but it is still stronger than any single shot laser rifle on the market, and the difference is negligible when compared to the subpar original version. Emerson's weapon fired six beams, mine fires seven. Dr. Natalie Vaughn. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have met you. I doubt you would have accepted me as a friend, but nonetheless, I would have liked to have met you. Uh, oh, 45 of it. When did we get this? Oh, I thought it was going to have the stock removed. Hmm. Uh, isn't there a... And there's the laser shotgun. Did I check the other one for mods? I don't think I did. Nope, no mods. Alright, well, cool place. <laughs> uh, I guess we will head out. What does it want us to do? Just inform them that there's nothing to salvage here? Sawyer. Okay. Wait, do we have to head back to that town, though, to let the, the ex-Brotherhood guy know? Wait, what was the name of that doctor? Was it Emerson? Is his body out here? Is there like a skeleton? That'd be cool. Um, Alright, well... Let's see, I think we're on the 30 minute mark, so I'm gonna cut here. When we come back, we'll uh, check out Vault 41. We'll see you guys then.